Hello again. Once more. Random page, random quote. I have come back again to where I belong. Not an enchanted place, but the walls are strong. For context, this is in the chapter on family. That is, quotes pertaining to family and the concept of family. I have come back again to where I belong. Not an enchanted place, but the walls are strong. This is attributed to one Dorothy H. Rath. That's wrath with an R A T H, not wrath as an anger. I figured I should point that out for some reason. You know, it's interesting that this uh, Dorothy Wrath words it that way. You know, I've heard, I've heard it said uh, very numerous times and in uh, very impassioned terms by a friend of mine that uh, at the end of the day, family is all you have. That no matter what happens, your family is always there for you. And numerous times when I heard this said, I silently, internally disagreed to various extents, depending on the time at which it was uh, spoken. Um, family has always been such a very uh, difficult thing to uh, deal with, especially for us adolescents and teenagers. It's this this thing, this group of people that you're related to genetically more than any other human being on Earth, and they try raising us, teaching us things. They try imposing restrictions on us to keep us safe and protect us, and we always argue, and many times we break these restrictions behind their backs and face punishment if we're caught, and snicker behind their backs if we're not. I, and I'm positive every other adolescent teenager, have had a, a very ambivalent love-hate relationship with my family. I have always found that no matter how much I want them to stop caring about me, no matter how tempted I make them to give up on me, to forget about me, to say he's a lost cause, don't worry about him anymore, they never seem to actually follow through with it. Even though many times, I shouldn't say many, several times, various members of my family have asked me if I want them to give up on me, if that is the course of action which I wish for them to take. And there have been times, most certainly, where I have said, yes. Give up. You're not getting anywhere. And they terminated the conversation. They walked away with the implication that that was what they were going to do. That they were going to give up. They were going to stop trying. They were going to declare me a lost cause. But the very next day, guess who still cares? <sighs> Shit. You know, let's see. Come back again to where I belong. Where I belong. No, that means different things to different people. I belong on a stage. Or at a typewriter, or not a typewriter, but rather a word processor opened up on a computer. You know, to write things. Some people belong in a cubicle. Some people belong in an office. Some people belong working on the fields. Some people belong in a library, in a gym, in a school, in a classroom, in a lecture hall, at a college. Different people belong in different places. And yet, Miss Rath words this uh, particular quotation very vaguely. And I find that is something of the key to good quotes. Pardon my reminder. The key to a good quote 
is to keep it vague. Specific enough that it gets to what you're trying to talk about, but at the same time open enough so that anyone reading it can put themselves into that quote. And like I said, where I belong means different things to different people, so what was Dorothy Rath trying to get at with that quote? Well, ignoring the fact that it's in the chapter on family, actually not ignoring that fact, it's probably the only reason I know. Where is the one place where everyone belongs? No matter who they are, what they love, what they do, what they hate, what they don't do. Home. That's where we belong. Home. That's where the concept of home comes from, where one belongs. And what can you find at home? And keep in mind, home too means different things. A house is not a home. It can be made a home. This room I've come to consider my home. Because of the objects with which I have filled it, these items of familiarity, the, these uh, objects from my past, artifacts of my life, and less literally, the memories I've ascribed to it, the the events which have occurred in this room, and the events which are represented in this room. You see those trophies back there? That was from when I studied martial arts. You see a medal there? That was when I played baseball. You see a plaque? That's my Rotary Award. Rotary Award for acting. If you look over here a bit more, if I change the camera, and I won't because I'm not going to bother with it. I have various targets for my shooting. Right there. I have a little uh, thing from my scouting days as a Boy Scout. Not so much a Boy Scout as much as a Cub Scout. I have various things from my days as a Boy Scout around here. And directly behind my laptop here is a row of Coca-Cola cans and two liter bottles which I drank and emptied and still have left here as a monument to when I drank them in memory of my research paper. Don't ask what grade I got in it because I'm just going to lie. It was a 90%. Was that the lie? Anyway. You've heard it said that home is where the heart is. And that is true. It's really no point in debating that because it's simple fact that's what a home is it's where you belong it's where you've made your home but the thing about it is sometimes in fact almost all the time home is home to more than just you consider the examples I listed earlier about what different people can consider home a stage well, a lot of people consider a stage their home an office a lot of people could consider an office their home Fields, schools, classrooms, lecture halls, colleges. Many people consider those to be their home. It's those people that are your non-biological family, if you will. I've always said that I have more than one family. I have my band family, my choir family, my show choir family, my theater family. For a short stint, I had a track family. I sort of still do. I still consider them to be my friends from distance running. Because I still love distance running, and I would still love to run with any of them. Just stay off cross country, okay? Don't recommend cross country. Moving away from that. Then you have your biological family, though. Family that you don't get to pick. Family that's there no matter what. And sure, there are numerous cases out there, thousands, perhaps even tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of cases out there where a family does not love you, where a family is not truly a family. Well, then that's just it. They're not a family. The definition of a family, uh, getting away from the biological aspect of it, is a group of people who love one another.
But let's uh, look at the other half of the quote. I have come back again to where I belong. Not an enchanted place, but the walls are strong. Even if your biological family is not a family, and it probably is, just doesn't seem like it, but even if it isn't, no family is an especially happy place. No family is an enchanted place. You will never feel completely and totally 100% happy 100% of the time when you're with your family, no matter which family it is. It's a simple fact about being a family. At the same time, though, the walls are strong. A true family will almost never stop being a family. Of course, we have that little uh, keyword, true family, there. True. Because not every family is a true family, and that's unfortunate. Because there's nothing that's more heartbreaking than seeing a family break apart, even if it wasn't a real family to begin with. So let's kind of consider this in entirety. I have come back again to where I belong, not an enchanted place, but the walls are strong. Miss Wrath here is saying that she, or whoever is reading the quote, whoever fills their shoes into it, has returned to where they belong, their home, where their family is. Whether it's the stage with their acting family, the uh, band room with their band family, the choir room with their choir family, the track with their track running family, the baseball fields with their baseball family, the football field with their football family, the rifle range with their shooting family, or their house, their shelter with their biological family. They have turned to some place where they belong, to a home. And even though it's not a perfect place, even though it's not great all the time, even though it's not enchanted, it's still always there for them always there for them to come back to and whenever they are there they are safe they are secure they are behind strong walls so I guess this is another challenge for you here is my challenge to you go back to where you belong Go to your home, whichever home you want, all of your homes if you want, some of your homes, most of your homes, one of your homes, as many as you want. Go to your family, your biological family, your acting family, your uh, whatever family, come on, I've listed these examples countless times now. And do something to make the walls even stronger. Because like I said, there's nothing, almost nothing, more heartbreaking than seeing a family fall apart, whether it's biological or not. So do something to prevent that from happening, even if it's not about to happen, even if it's not on the verge of happening, because it probably isn't. Do something to prevent it from even possibly happening in the future. Get someone else's contact information. Become closer friends with someone else in your families. Text them more. Message them more on Facebook or DM them on Twitter. Hang out with them more. Spend time with them. You know, not even just that. You can just be with your families more. Or you can do something to make them even tighter. If you see something going on in one of your families that you think might present an issue, do something about it. I know in the theater it's horrific when I look at uh, actors tearing apart other actors for no other reason than just out of drama. Not even the drama on the stage. In fact, it's one of my favorite sayings to say, leave the drama off the stage. It's ironic, but it's true. Anyway, I won't go further down that tangent. So, you. Insert name here. 
That's my challenge to you. Pick a family, any family, as many families as you want, as many families as you have. Go to where you belong, to that not enchanted place. And think about what you're going to do to make the walls even stronger. So what happens now? Once again, as always, it's up to you.